the face of such a desperate situation, although Roy was desperate, but he didn't give up. He mumbled something under his breath, calculating the frequency of the waves. At the moment of the next wave, Roy's eyes snapped open. He let go of his hand. He jumped off the cliff a hundred meters high, falling on the waves. Roy didn't fall to his death, but the water was too shallow and he hit the rocks. After a short period of dizziness, Roy soon came to his senses, struggling to flail his arms and legs. Before he drowned, shouting, he rose to the surface. He was too happy to be back from the dead, rolling and crawling to higher ground, lying on the rocks. He breathed heavily. It took a few moments for a stunned Roy to recover. He sat up and found a large, bone deep gash in his right hand. The white bones of his right hand were a sight to behold, but no matter how bad the wound was, he was alive after all. Roy cried for a while to calm down. He was ready to get out of here, but as soon as he took his left foot, he heard a crunching sound in his lower back. He lost feeling in both legs. Then he fell to the ground. Sometime later Roy was awakened by the waves. He sat up in a daze. He found that his right hand had been eroded by the sea. The pain was excruciating. But the next moment Roy realized with despair, compared to the pain in his waist, his hand was only a minor injury. His hip bone had been shattered in the jump, except for his feet, which he could barely move. Both thighs were completely uncontrollable. It was then that Roy finally remembered. He still had a mobile phone. He hurriedly removed his bag and unzipped it with his teeth, only to find the phone was soaked in water and completely ruined. In desperation, Roy began to scream for help. His hoarse voice echoed across the beach, but the only sound in this place was the waves, except for people like him. Normally no one would even come near.